before we officially begin with the ceremony, I request Apoorv to deliver the brief profile of Professor N. R. Madhva Menon to the audience present here. Apoorv, the floor is all yours. Thank you, ma'am. Professor Menon, BSc, BL, MA, LLM, and PhD, enrolled as an advocate in Kerala High Court in 1956 and later joined the faculty of Aligarh Muslim University in 1960. In 1965, he moved to Delhi University and became professor and head of campus by Law Center. Meanwhile, he also served as principal, government law college, Pondicherry, and secretary, Bar Council of India Trust. In 1986, Professor Menon took up the challenging mission from Bar Council of India to set up the first national law university in Bangalore with five-year integrated LLB and later became its founding vice chancellor. For decades, he worked for reforming and revolutionizing the legal education, not only in India, but also in the Sark nations. He was the founder, vice chancellor of the National University of Juridical Sciences, Calcutta, 1998 to 2003, and the founder director of National Judi Judicial Arm Academy, Bhopal, till 2006. On retirement in 2006, the government of India appointed him as member of the Commission on Center State Relations in 2006 and 2010. He was also chairman of the Indian Statistical Institute, Kolkata, and the Center of Development Studies, Trivandrum. He chaired the Government of India Committee to draft a national policy on criminal justice and the Committee on Equal Opportunity Commission. Professor Menon was decorated with several awards by the government and professional bodies, like the, the Government of India with Padma Shri, the highest civilian award for outstanding public services in 2003. He was elected chairman of Commonwealth Legal Education Association in 1997. Professor Menon engaged in professional development, training of lawyers and law teachers under the aegis of IBA chair at the National Law School. He was chairman of Menon Institute of Legal Advocacy Training, Millard. He was a member of governing boards of many universities. He authored over a dozen books on legal education, legal profession, legal aid, judicial training, and administration of justice. The book titled Turning Point 2010 is a biography on the life and work of Professor Menon. The life achievements and tireless and unmatchable contributions for more than six decades of Professor Menon the father of modern legal education, as an academician, institution builder, and a socially committed jurist, is being commemorated by Silf Millard through its annual Best Law Teachers Awards instituted in Professor Menon's name since 2009. Thank you so much, Apoor, for giving us a brief detailed description of um, Professor N. R. Madhva Men. Uh, as we wait for the chief guest to arrive, thank you so much. I, I take this opportunity to thank everybody who has taken their time to join us in this, um, in this event. Uh, and thank you so much for waiting. So without, um, I, would, I would really like to appreciate everyone who has been, who's joined in on time. And uh, thank you so much for your presence. Thank you so, so much for your support. Uh, we are still awaiting for Sir's um, arrival. So thank you so much and thank you for cooperating with us.
Why can't? Why can't uh, we start? With, why can't we start now? Because uh, those who have not joined, they can join in later. Okay, sir. We will check it with now Nagesh Rao, sir. Then we will start, sir. No, no. They said that he will join in only around three fifty-five or okay, four. Okay, 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 sir. So, in any case, his address comes much later. Ah, sir. Okay, sir. For the young lawyer, the students who are here, you see, time management is very important and crucial, particularly for lawyers and also for honorable judges also. Time management, one should stick to the schedules.
Good evening to one and all present here. I'm taking this opportunity to further tell the audience over here about the life of Padma Bhushan, late Professor N. R. Madhva Menon. As already mentioned by Apoor, in 1969, 1986, Professor Menon took a mission from Bar Council of India to set up the first national law university in Bangalore with five years integrated LLB and later became its founding vice chancellor. For decades, he worked for reforming and revolutionizing the legal education, not only in India, but also in Sark nations. He was the founder vice chancellor of the National University of Juridical Sciences, Calcutta, 1998 to 2003, and the founder director of National Judicial Academy, Bhopal till 2006. On retirement in 2006, the government of India appointed him as the member of commission on state center relations from 2006 to 2010. He was also a chairman of the Indian Statistical Institute, Calcutta, and of the center of the department studies, Trivandrum. He chaired the government of India committee to draft a national policy on criminal justice and the committee on equal opportunity commission he was a member of the Committee on the Criminal Justice Reform and the Committee of Restructuring of the Higher Education in India. He served two terms as the members of the Law Commission in India. Professor Menon was decorated with several awards by the government and the professional bodies, to name a few. The International Bar Council honored him with the Living Legend of Law Award in 1994. It is not International Bar Council, it is International Bar Association. I'm so sorry, and sir. Madam, <laughs> Madam, don't use Professor Mother Menon's name to while away the time. You know, we all know Professor Menon. This is in his memory. We are familiar with his profile. And then you are not even familiar with what awards and all that have been given yes. to him. Please I apologize, sir. I, I sincerely it. apologize. So this is not that, you see, uh, you don't use it to pass away, the, pass the time, simply because we are waiting for, you see, someone to come. I, I completely understand your point, sir. I'm so sorry. And I did not wish to um, put forth any of those things. And I apologize once again. Uh, we are just, we just, we just got a confirmation from um, Justice Bindal that he will be joining in a minute or so. So once we have him, we will be able to proceed with the program, sir. Justice Bindal was already there. He had checked in, you see, at logged in at about 3.15. Then he was told that, you see, the it will start at 4 o'clock. So now... Justice Nageshwar Rao has already, uh, is joining now. We can start program uh, in a minute, madam. Sure, sir. Thank you so much for that information. I'm so sorry, sir, for taking your time. Welcome, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, good afternoon. A very good evening to you, sir. With your due, due permission, can we begin with the ceremony? Yes, please. Good. Thank you, sir. I request the anchoring team to kindly take over. A very good evening to all present here. I, Ayusha Srivastav, feel privileged to welcome you all on behalf of the organizing committee, management, staff, and students of Lloyd Law College to the valedictory function of Professor N. R. Madhva Menon Asian Jural Conclave 2021-22 which comprises the seventh professor N.R. Madhva Men in Asian Mooting Competition India Round. It is with immense pleasure that we welcome our esteemed guests. First of all, I would like to welcome our chief guest, Honorable Mr. Justice L. Nageshwar Rao, Judge, Supreme Court of India. The report of the competition will be given by Dr. Kilesh Kumar Khan, Deputy Director, Lloyd Law College, Secretary General, Professor N. R. Madhva Menon, Asian Jural Conclave. Thereafter, Professor Dr. S. Sivakumar, Senior Professor, Indian Law Institute, New Delhi, former member, Law Commission of India, 
Honorary Asian Jural Conclave Administrator and Mr. R. Venkat Ramani, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India, Co-Chairperson, Professor N. R. Madhva Menon, Asian Jural Conclave, will address the gathering, which will be followed by a special address by Dr. Lalit Bhasin, President, Society of Indian Law Firms and Bar Association of India. Later, our guest of honor, Honorable Mr. Justice Rajesh Bindal, Chief Justice, High Court of Judicature at Allahabad, will address us. Our guest of honor, Honorable Mr. Justice L. Nageshwar Rao, Judge, Supreme Court of India, will release the brochure of Asian rounds of Professor N. R. Madhva Menon Asian Mooting Competition, Law Student Conference, and Colloquium 2021-22, and shall give us the valedictory address. Finally, Professor Dr. Lisa P. Lukos, Professor, University School of Law and Legal Studies, Guru Gobind Singh Indapras University, Delhi, Treasurer Milat, National Administrator, India, will do the honors of declaring the winners. And to wrap up the event, we will have vote of thanks by Dr. Madhukar Sharma, Deputy Director Academics, Lloyd Law College. Good evening, everyone present here. I, Aditi Shivasa, happily introduce Mr. Manoha Tarani, President, Lloyd Law College and Chairperson, Founding Committee, Professor N. R. Madhava Menon, Asian Jural Conclave. Mr. Tarani is a chartered accountant by profession. He established Lloyd Law College in year 2003 to facilitate quality education area of law. Under his guidance, the Law College has successfully endured to create for itself an extraordinary position in area of legal education in India. I would like to invite Mr. Manoha Tarani, President, Lloyd Law College, to formally welcome our guests and the participants. Thank you so much, Adeli. Uh, respected Chief Guest of the Day, Honorable Mr. Justice Ed Nagshwa, sir, Judge Supreme Court of India, respected Guest of Honor, Honorable Mr. Justice Rajesh Bindal, sir, Chief Justice, High Court of Judiciary, Al Alabad, a very, very distinguished guest, Dr. Lalit Basin, sir, President Self and Bar Association of India. Shri R. Venkapri, sir, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India, and co chair person, Professor N. R. Madhav Menon, Asian Jewel Conclave, Professor Dr. S. C. Kumar, sir, Honorary Asian Jewel Conclave Administrator, Senior Professor, Indian Law Institute, Dr. Lisa P. Lukus, Professor, IT University, Prashra Milat, and National Administrator, Professor N. R. Madhav Menon, Asian Jewel Conclave. Mr. Ramesh Menon, son of our mentor and guru, Adam Bhushan, Professor N. R. Madhav Menon, sir. Dr. Mohammad Salim, sir, Director, Royal Law College, Dr. Akhilesh Kumar Khan, Advocate Robin Jacob, Advocate Anju Jain, Advocate Dr. Anand Vijay, Professor Sharma, eminent dignitaries, faculty members, and very dear participants. A very good afternoon and a very, very warm welcome to all of you. It's with immense pleasure that I welcome all of you to the veterinary section of the seventh Professor Anna Madha Menon, Asian Jewel Conclave, India Round 2122. I consider it as a great privilege and honor for us to host the event in the seventh edition. We are extremely indebted to Adam Kushan, Professor Dr. Anna Madha Menon, sir, our beloved mentor and guru, for allowing us to conduct this competition in his name and continuously trusting us and giving the confidence to move ahead. It is our privilege to collaborate with Milan and SIL for organizing this prestigious mooting competition for the benefit of law students. As we look back to the last seven years, I would like to say that it was a blessing for us to conduct the first four editions of this competition under the direct supervision of Madhav Menon, sir. Now we take this mooting competition as a humble and sincere effort and mission to take forward Menon sir's vision under the guidance of Shiv Kumar sir, Venkatri sir, who are wholeheartedly committed in taking forward Menon sir's legacy. 
I consider it an honor and noble task to welcome the eminent guests and legal luminaries who are present here to be part of this lecture event. We are extremely honored today by the gracious presence of Honorable Mr. Justice El Nagiswar Sir, Judge Supreme in India. Sir had visually agreed to be the chief guest at the inaugural function today. Lord Chief's very presence here indicates his commitment to go beyond traditional approaches to strengthen and inspire our younger generation lawyers and students. Lord Chief's decisions have always reflected his keen sense of justice and urge us to go beyond the accepted interpretations and law. Respected Lordship, I would request you also to kindly visit the campus at your convenience. It would be a great privilege to welcome you in our campus. Honorable Lordship, on behalf of all present here, we extend a very, very warm welcome to your Lordship as Chief Guest of Function. A very warm welcome, sir. We are extremely grateful and indebted by the gracious presence of Honorable Mr. Justice Rajesh Bindal, sir, Chief Justice, High Court of Judiciary at Allahabad, as the guest of honor for this directed session. Honorable Lordship has always focused on nurturing and inspiring the younger generation of law professionals and Lordship's acceptance of our invitation to this session reaffirms his commitment to mentor the law students to grow into responsible and capable legal profession. We had the privilege and honor to have the Lordship with us in few previous occasions of the competition as just an special invitee. I express my sincere gratitude to Lordship for always extending the support and inspiring us to strive towards the service. Honorable Lordship, on behalf of all present here, we extend a very, very warm welcome to you as a guest of honor. I just welcome Lordship. <clears throat> it's with great privilege and honor that I welcome Dr. Lali Bhatin, sir, President Silk and Bharat Association India. This event has gained great popularity due to the collaborative effort of Silk and the support and guidance extended by Bhatin, sir. Sir, your contribution is annual, is absolutely invaluable to the completion. A very, very warm welcome to you, sir. Sri R. Venkatri, sir, Senior Advocate, Supreme of India, and co-chairperson of Professor N. R. Maidar Menon, Asian Jewel Complay, is a true well wisher and advisor of our college. We feel blessed for all the support and guidance he extends to us. As a student of our beloved Madhav Menon, sir, Advocate Venkatri sir is key to take forward the entire program to great, greater heights and achieving his vision. Dear sir, I extend a very, very warm welcome to you. Professor Shiv Kumar sir, Senior Professor in the Law Institute, former member of Law Commission India, Chairman Milad, and honorary Administrator of Professor Anna Madhavan, Asian Jewel Conclave, is a very, very dear friend of the Institute. Sir has been continuously guiding us and in supporting us on the growth of the Institute. It has to be stated that Sir is the driving force behind the whole initiative. He has meticulously planned and organized this event to strive towards the goals of Madam Man and Sir. Sir, it's an honor and privilege to work with you and under your guidance for the successful conduct of this program and I extend a very, very warm welcome to you, Sir. I extend a warm welcome to Professor Dr. L. Lisa P. Lukus, National Treasurer, India. She has been guiding the conduct of the event through his, her valuable inputs and suggestion in all the seven editions of this competition. Madam's hard work and her commitment to the conduct of this program is very admirable. A very, very warm welcome to you, Madam. The educators for the present competition are drawn from legal, academia, bar, and bench. I extend a heartfelt welcome to all of you, sirs and madam. I also would like to welcome our passionate and athletic doctor, director, sir, Dr. Monsari, our deputy director, sir, Advocate Robin Jacob, sir, for putting their heart and soul for betterment of the institution and for their dedicated work for organizing the seventh Professor N. R. Madhavan Asian Jewel Conclave. I wholeheartedly, I wholeheartedly extend a warm welcome to all the students participants present here. Each of the students present here has to be congratulated for the hard work they put in and are proudly representing their institute. As we witness, all the participants have sent their jewels, which led to a vibrant competing session. I applaud the hard work put in by the students. I hope that the competition was as fair and transparent as we had assured you, and that you will remember this even with fond memories. I hope this event inspires idea and vision which we can help 
to transform the face of our country's legal education in alignment with the vision of our guide and mentor, Professor Dr. Aina Madhavan, sir. With these thoughts and wishes, I once again welcome and assure all present today to this valedictory program. A very, very warm welcome to all of you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your visionary approach, support, and inspiring words. I, Tanushri Rai, would like to invite Dr. Akhilesh Kumar Khan, Deputy Director, Lloyd Law College, and Secretary General, Professor N.R. Madhava Menon Asian Jural Conclave to present the report of the competition. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the respected chief guest, Honorable Mr. Justice L. Nageshwar Rao, Judge Supreme Court of India, the guest of honor of today's function, Honorable Mr. Justice Rajesh Bindal, Chief Justice, High Court of Judicature at Allahabad, distinguished guest, Dr. Lalit Bhaseen, President, Self and Bar Association of India, Mr. R. Venkat Ramni, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India, Mr. Manohar Therani, President, Lloyd Law College, Professor Dr. S. Siva Kumar, Senior Professor, Indian Law Institute, New Delhi. Professor Dr. Lisa P. Lukos, Professor, GGSIP University. Mr. Robin Jacob, Advocate, High Court of Delhi. Dr. Mohammed Salim, Director, Lloyd Law College. Dr. Madhuka Sharma, Deputy Director, Lloyd Law College. Adjudicators of the competition, faculty members, participants from across the country, and my dear students. As I stand before you to present the report of competition of Professor N. R. Madhva Menon, Asian Zural Conclave 2021-22, seventh Professor N. R. Madhva Menon, Asian Mooting Competition, India Round. Let me invoke the blessing of Professor Menon, who has guided us since the inception of this competition. It was Sir's guidance and unwavering commitment towards the student community and to the excess of law to the last man in the line that this year we are taking this competition to Asian countries also. Professor N. R. Madhva Menon, Asian Zural Conclave 21-22, seventh Professor N. R. Madhva Menon, Asian Mooting Competition, India Round, was organized by Lloyd Law College with technical support from Menon Institute of Legal Advocacy, Training, Milat, and Society of Indian Law Firms, SILF from 26th November to 28th November 2021. The inaugural function of this competition was graced by Honorable Mr. Justice S. Thurai Raja, Judge Supreme Court of Sri Lanka, as the Chief Guest, and Professor Dr. Dilip UK, Vice Chancellor, Maharashtra National Law University, Mumbai, as the Guest of Honor. The competition was held in online mode due to the restrictions because of the coronavirus pandemic. The competition witnessed participation of students from across India. This year, a total number of 52 teams finally registered for India round, of which 40 participated through these three days. The competition was divided into two rounds in two stages. Through this India round, a total seven teams will be announced qualified to represent India at the Professor N. R. Madhva Menon Asian Jural Conclave 21-22 to be held from 25th to 27th February 2022. The theme of the mooting proposition for this round was dimensions of social media, regulations, and privacy. Each round of the competition was judged by a two-member bench including knowledgeable and experienced professionals from the academia, bar, and bench. Like every year, this year too, two students, a male and a female, will be selected for Self Millard Best, Student, Best Law Student Award for the full scholarship of $50,000 to pursue their master's from Penn State Law. The mode proposition this year was drafted by Dr. Anant Vijay Maria, Advocate Supreme Court of India, and settled by Mr. R. Venkatramani, Senior Advocate Supreme Court of India. 
these propositions reflect the issues which are either debated or under the deliberations in the actual court of law as i present the report of the competition let me add that organizing committee has continuously strived for a fair and transparent competition the last past the past six editions of the competition both india and sark rounds have diligently maintained fairness and transparency right from the compilation of moot proposition to adjudication of each round each step of the competition the compilation of moot proposition evaluation of memorials and the adjudication of the competition is done under the scholarly guidance of the academia bar and bench the organizing committee has industriously aimed at providing a healthy mooting experience to every single competing team in the competition this competition like the previous competitions would not have been a success without the continuous effort of our student volunteers our volunteers have been active since july to make this event a grand success the competition in this year is special as we are expanding earlier participation from sar countries were there and this year we will hold a competition where representative from bar the bench by academia and student community from across the asian region will participate from 25th february to 27th february 2022 the professor n r madhav menon asian jural conclave 21 22 will hold three programs the mooting competition the students conference and judicial colloquium i hope your experience at india round was a pleasant one and to you all i also extend the invitation for the professor n r madhav menon in asian jural conclave 21 22 before i end i wish to say that you all are free to share your suggestions if any with me i also take this opportunity to congratulate in advance the top 7 qualified teams from india for this competition in the next round thank you everyone thank you very much thank you so much sir for sharing with us the report of the competition i ujwal gar i am glad to announce that we have amongst us professor dr s siva kumar senior professor indian law institute new delhi former member law commission of india honorary asian jural conclave administrator and chairman menon institute of legal advocacy training professor dr s siva kumar is the recipient of national law day award in 2008 for his contribution to legal education reform activities he is the president of commonwealth law legal education association clia london and the president of clia asia sir may i request you to kindly address the gathering thank you honorable mr justice l nagesh rao one of the senior most judge supreme court of india and chief guest is chief guest of the day honorable mr justice rajesh bindal chief justice of high court of judicature allahabad guest of honor our esteemed learned advocate dr lalit basin president societies of indian law firms and president bar association of india sri r venkatramani senior advocate supreme court of india and co chairperson of this conclave mr manohar tairani president lloyd law college and co chairperson of the conclave professor lisa p lucos national administrator of the conclave and professor uh, indraprastha university new delhi mr ramesh menon our Ma uh, mendes san professor mohammad salim director lloyd law college dr aglesh kumar khan deputy director lloyd law college madam anju jain coordinator of this program distinguished guest esteemed panel of judges 
dear participants of this moot court competition, my fellow colleagues in the faculty, especially the coordinators of this program, Mr. Naveen Kumar, Dr. Madhugar Sharma, Advocate uh, Robin Jacob, Dr. Vijay um, Anand Vijay Maurya, this, uh, who created, pro formulated this problem. Dear students, ladies and gentlemen, good evening to you all. I feel highly illustrious on the occasion of valedictory function of Professor N. R. Madhav Menon, Asian Mooting Competition, India Round, organized by Lloyd Law College in association with Menon Institute of Legal Advocacy Training and societies of Indian law firms. The success of the event proved that the mission set up by Padmabhushan Professor Madhav Menon is becoming a great success. The esteemed presence of galaxy of intellectuals and experts at this program made this national round another step forward in making India stand profound and honored in the field of legal education. Honorable Lordship, we have participants and adjudicators from Kashmir to Kanyakumari and Itanagar to Gandhi Nagar. The positive belief and optimism of Professor Manon has made us throughout to felicitate legal education as a platform to understand the legal justice system in India. Through this program, we put forward the same idea along with the efforts of Menon Institute of Legal Advocacy Training, Lloyd Law College, and societies of Indian law firm to bring a spark and awareness in the field of legal education system. We are deeply indebted to Honorable Mr. Justice L. Nagesh Rao, who is always supportive of all academic and professional activities. I am sure that Lordship experience and knowledge in the field, in the legal field, is a boon not only to the parties appearing before him, but also to every student of law who is interested in proper analysis and interpretation of legal principles. We are really honored by Lordship's kind acceptance of our program and your very presence itself is an encouragement to the participants and the students as a whole. We are equally indebted to Honorable Mr. Justice Rajesh Bindal, the Chief Justice of Allahabad High Court, whose profession itself is a testimony for law students. This is third time Honorable Justice is uh, associating with us. In the previous years, we have the privilege and honor to have his expertise in the final round of selection process as well as the judicial colloquium as an eminent speaker. Thank you, Justice, for your valuable time again. I am continuing this journey with the strong support I receive from Mr. Manohar Tairani, Mr. R. Venkatramani, Professor Lisa Pilukos, and especially from our learned advocate, Dr. Lelith Basin. And Lelith Basin sir's presence today indicates the patronage of two uh, largest professional organization of our country, Societies of Indian Law Firm and Bar Association of India. Their cooperation is immense and always encouraging. I appreciate the efforts put by each and every contributor and participant to let the event take place in a virtual manner this year. The competition has spread its wings and now is ready to evolve further and gladly this year, we are embarking to other regions by extending the competition to other Asian countries except few. The event in a 
form of Asian Jural Conclave allows the students to gain lifetime experience by meeting legal intellects from different countries. The simple fact of participating in such activities is more important than winning or losing. While a healthy sense of competition does indeed motivate the law student to improve their skills. In the long run, they must remember that there are shades of gray when they eventually take up the legal practice. We are associated with this legal fraternity, whether from the bar or bench, or as an academic, academician, or as a legal student, definitely understand that the lawyers have played a seminal role in our freedom movement, as well as in the framing of our Indian constitution. This spirit has to be envisioned by such learning by doing techniques in order to sustain along with the democratic tradition to help the budding legal scholars to imbibe values which our society as well as the country demands for. It goes without saying that Milat, Silf, and Lloyd Law College serve as an incubators of these values by organizing these events. I bid adieu to the first phase of Asian Jural Conclave mooting competition and the Students' Award Selection India Round. I am looking forward to another events to take place in a placid manner with great success like the present one. In the Asian Round, the teams from five regions of Asia, East Asia, West Asia, North Asia, South Asia and Central Asia are expected to participate from 25th to 27th of February 2022. We are this time we are organizing it is virtually. This year the topic for law students conference is technology and future of law in Asia for judicial colloquium new Asia and diverse constitutional framework. This platform in the form of Jural Conclave is initiated with the vision of making various countries of Asian continent come together and promote legal system of education and give their better picture of law and justice across the region. Finally, as the uh, honorary administrator of Jural Conclave, I encourage every student to live with life and be courageous and adventurous with a seal to learn. I quote, give us a tomorrow even more than we deserve, unquote. With these words, I once again thank you all for patiently listening to me and would like to convey my best wishes to all the participants and organizers of this program. I especially uh, uh, congratulate a vibrant team under the leadership of Professor Mohammed Salim and Dr. Aglish Khan and a team of uh, teachers and students, more than 100 students, though we are conducting in virtually, physically we are present here in the venue, more than 200 people, 100 students and other technical staff and all, we are, they are making this program very, uh, uh, in all, all together a success. I once again thank you, all, all these organizing committee members for that. I would sincerely like to thank once again, our chief guest, Honorable Mr. Justice L. Nageshwar Rao, Judge Supreme Court of India, and our guest of honor, Honorable Mr. Justice Rajesh Bindal for taking time out of their respective schedules 
and being a part of this event. My special appreciation to all the participants, especially to the qualifying teams. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your words of inspiration. We are privileged to have amongst us Mr. R. Venkatramani, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India, Co-Chairperson, NR Madhava Menon Asian Jural Conclave. Mr. Venkatramani is former member of the Law Commission of India. Mr. Venkatramani has completed over 40 years of practice in the Supreme Court of India and has been actively involved in academic activities since 1988. Mr. Venkatramani is instrumental promoting comparative law studies and in exploring new areas of legal theory and jurisprudence. Sir, may I request you to kindly address the gathering. Thank you so much. Let me first uh, express my sincere thanks and gratitude to both Justice Nagesh Rao and Chief Justice Bindal for being with us today. It uh, gives me personally a lot of support and I'm sure the students will be feel inspired by their presence and uh, their words of wisdom they propose to share with you. And um, every year when I gather as part of this Professor Menon remembering event, I may put it like that. I wish to keep telling the students that uh, our country has one of the most venerable traditions of respecting the Guru. And uh, as a former student of Professor Menon, and having worked with him for long, almost from 19. 79 onwards, either as a student or later as part of some activities in the National Law School, Bangalore or Judicial Academy, Bhopal, or, or any one of those very wonderful activities where I've been with him. I want to bring back to the students who have never had an opportunity of listening to him or hearing him or say that we must continue to preserve and promote this tradition of a guru with as much veneration as possible and needed. Because that gives us a lot of uh, way of shaping our minds and then the way we live, both as a professional and outside. Having said that, there's a big bus going around the world today. And one is that how are you going to cope up with challenges uh, brought in by something unprecedented? And the other is, across the world, you will find that not one day passes without people, governments, or courts talking about the importance of constitution, rule of law. Lots of things are being written about rule of law. And as was conceived post-1948, and rule of law as we now look at it today, And in consonance with that, you'll find in several countries, particularly when we are talking about an Asian Jural conclave being, yes, you look at uh, some of the East European countries, which uh, brought their freedom after the collapse of Soviet Russia, and some of the South American countries, which witnessed the collapse of constitutions, re-emergence of constitutional rule, and uh, about the pursuit of happiness and Due to some uh, connectivity issues, I think uh, Mr. Arvind Katramani, sir, could not have 
Am I audible now? Now you are audible, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. I'm audible now. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Uh, that's the kind of question we keep asking the judges every day in the court. I mean, and that's how we get introduced to the court. And that's, so, that's so, uh, so, you are anyway, audible. So the, uh, very well. The long, the long story of moots and their connect learning in, in, in law schools is a very important chapter by itself. Sir, you are you not know, sir, now. dealing with a problem, but something beyond that. Of course, what's happening? Yes, sir, that's all right. Sir. Pardon? Yes, sir, you are audible, sir. Sir, audible, sir. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, yes, you are. Uh, these are unwitting interruptions. I think I apologize for that. So this, we were about the need to learn from history. We are talking about the need to look at the future. We are talking about the, the need to look at legal education from an entirely different perspective. So the irrelevance of legal education in the past in, in, in looking at and then dealing with issues concerning constitutional challenges and problems. So all that was a, was a matter for Ma Professor Manon's constant thinking and debate. So we thought it will be a befitting tribute to pay to Professor Manon to open up a larger space for interaction across, at least to begin with the Asian region. One could have started like Jessup Moot Court competition, the like international Moot Court competition. But then there's a reason behind why we thought we'll look at Asia. Asia has a certain history. Its countries and civilizations have certain contributions. And uh, the emerging developments in Asia through democracy, constitutional rule and rule of law are important things to be noticed and then to be, to be probably taken care of in, in a global development of understanding of legal education and its relevance to administration of justice. So I welcome all the students here and um, I would not like take more of your time I would like to listen to just Nageshwar Rao and just Bindal, but only I would have one small um, thing to share that when uh, the Inns of Court are talking about mooting as a first experiment in 997, the persons who are part of the Inns of Court were not only learning law, they were learning history, they were learning scriptures, they learned music and dancing. So today, I think legal education will have to completely transform itself to a different orientation where the complete internalization of all that is relevant by way of knowledge and understanding from a global perspective is something which is inevitable and must be there. So our focus on the dual conclave will be to march ahead by using this platform and to be able to gather all the richness of the understanding and knowledge that is likely to come. I wish all the students here who have participated in the Moot Court great life ahead and their professions and otherwise. And uh, let me once again thank and congratulate Lloyds for the wonderful platform and all the team around us who work tirelessly to make this event a very memorable event year after year. Thank you, Juan. Thank you, sir. We are honored to have you amongst us. Now, I, Ahmad Usman, welcome Dr. Lalit Basin, President, Society of Indian Law Firms and Bar Association of India. Dr. Basin, started yeah, that, his... is, uh, that is enough, you see. <laughs> I've already been introduced. So, 
Thank okay, you. sir. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm honored to invite you, sir, to give this special address. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Honorable Justice uh, Nageshwar Rao, Honorable Chief Justice Rajesh Bindalji of Allahabad High Court, other distinguished speakers today, the organizers, the Lloyd Law School faculty, the students, and the family of Professor Menon, the son, Mr. Ramesh Menon. We are paying a tribute to Professor Menon. I had the good fortune of knowing him for nearly five decades when he initiated the steps for setting up the National Law School at Bangalore. And I, I was the founder uh, member of the advisory board of the National Law School and our association continued. And it blossomed into a very good relationship where we, both of us, along with Professor Shiv Kumar, uh, we thought that we should enlarge, you see, the scope and interaction with the students, not just in India, but even outside India. These were the initiatives that we initiated. And it was a sad thing which Mr. Fali Nariman, one of the greatest lawyers of India, in 1994, when we were giving the award to Professor Madhav Menon as a living legend of law on behalf of the International Bar Association, he said, it is very sad that such eminent jurists like Professor Menon have never been elevated, you see, to the Supreme Court or the judiciary. There is a provision that it is not just, you see, the lawyers or the high court judges who can be appointed, but the jurists can be appointed to the Supreme Court. Now, what a better tribute to this great professor of law, Professor Menon, and coming from one of the greatest lawyers of India. And Today, I am addressing essentially the students, the teams, 43 teams who have participated. It is a tremendous exercise undertaken by you under these difficult circumstances of the pandemic. And I must pay tribute to Lloyd's Law College and Mr. Manohar Therani for having organized it so successfully with the help of his faculty, with the help of others, and Professor Shiv Kumar, uh, Mr. R. Venkat Ramani, and so many other. Um, so it is, it is a befitting tribute, I think, to the memory of Professor Menon. Uh, the teams are fortunate to participate in this. My bullet points to you, the young participants, are four C's, C, C for Kolkata, Calcutta. Four C's means one is concentration. Second is competence. Competence includes knowledge, clarity, and commitment. In the present today's gathering today, we have one shining example of what these four C's can achieve for a young professional. And I'm talking of no other person than Honorable Justice Nageshwar Rao. He started his life as a legal professional, as a lawyer, a very distinguished lawyer. And he never became a judge of a high court. He was elevated directly from being a senior advocate to the Supreme Court as a judge. One of the very, very few cases where this elevation has been done from the bar to the bench of the Supreme Court directly. What was the reason? The reason was that he believed in and implemented these four C's. He concentrated on the legal profession. He was thoroughly a very competent because I had the privilege also of briefing him when he was practicing as a senior counsel. 
great competence and knowledge which is required these days as mr venkat ramani rightly said that knowledge is not just reading the contract act or the cpc or the ipc or the companies act these are days of globalization you have to be aware of contemporaneous developments which are taking place all over the world that is what a lawyer you see should learn not just study the uh, yes of course you have to study you have to do research in law but try to enlarge your learning process to include so many other things but more importantly what is required and what i saw as a as a very visible thing in justice nageshwar rao was his clarity now clarity comes only if you have good knowledge therefore firstly it should be competence that is knowledge second is clarity clarity of two kinds clarity of writing clarity of expression oral expression if you are not good in pleadings in your writings then you see no matter what you say how you address the court you see that will not carry any weight with the honorable court because certain things have to be pleaded therefore expression in writing is very very important and very essential and then equally important for the litigation lawyers is your fluency of expression and clarity of expression how you bring to the honorable courts attention the issues which have which are there in the in your matters which come before them therefore clarity please try to improve your knowledge and develop this art of clarity both in writing and i have suggested to lloyds law school and some other institution that there should be some subject on legal writing therefore please give moot is important but moot again is based on what you have pleaded therefore legal writing is very important and then coupled with expression but above all you must have commitment commitment because this is a very very jealous pr profession you cannot play with it you have to be involved in it 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 becomes your life you know there are no timings in this profession and that that is what you should learn from our honorable judges like uh, justice nageshwar rao and uh, honorable chief justice rajesh bindal that their dedication firstly as lawyers and then as judges i think that commitment has to be there in any one who wants to go in for legal profession whether as a corporate lawyer whether as a litigation lawyer whether as an in house lawyer or whether representing some ngos that sort of commitment for the profession has to be there so my young friends please remember these four c's and these will help you in the long run in trying to understand what the legal profession is about it's a great pleasure for me to participate in this very very distinguished valedictory function in the august presence of uh, honorable justice nageshwar rao the justice rajesh uh, bindal and uh, uh, professor uh, and mr venkat ramani uh, dr uh, professor dr mohammad salim uh, mr Uh, of course mr manohar therani professor lucos dr akhilesh kumar khan uh, avantika dohera dr madhukar sharma and above all all the anchors who have done a great job my congratulation to the anchors and also to the team organizers best wishes to all the teams you have already succeeded by being by participating in this uh, in this uh, competition whether someone wins or someone loses that does not matter your recognition has come by your mere participation in one of the most prestigious moot competitions in india thank you very much and all the best thank you sir it's a pleasure to have you among us Now, Aridhima Jain would like to introduce our guest of honor, Honorable Mr. Justice Rajesh Bindal. 
Chief Justice, High Court of Judicature at Allahabad. Justice Rajesh Bindal joined his profession in High Court of Punjab and Haryana in September 9th. Let it be brief. Oh. Yes, sir. Honorable Justice was appointed to perform duties as Chief Justice of Calcutta from 29th April 2021 and took oath as Chief Justice of Allahabad High Court on 11th October 2021. Sir, I request you to kindly address the gathering. Thank you. Thank you, Mirajma Ji. Honorable Mr. Justice L. Nageshwar Rao, Supreme Court of India, Sri Manohar Tharani, President Lloyd Law College, Chairperson, Founding Committee, Professor N. R. Madhva Menon, Asian Jural Conclave, Dr. Lalit Bhaseen, Senior Advocate and President, Society of Indian Law Firms and President of the Bar Association of India, Sri R. Venkatramani, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India and Chairperson. Professor N. R. Madhva Menon, Asian Jural Conclave. Professor Dr. F. Shivakumar, Senior Professor, Indian Law Institute, Honorable Asian Jural Conclave Administrator. All other professors and teachers associated with the conclave, dear students, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> so, that was great privilege for me to be part of this event, which is not merely a moot court competition, but a part of Professor Padam Shri and our Madhva Menon Asian Jural Conclave 21-22. I must congratulate Lloyd Law College for taking this initiative to the seventh year and from SARC countries to Asian countries. It includes students' conference, judicial colloquium, research papers. Madam Shri, Dr. Professor Madhva Menon is known as architect of five years integrated course law in India. All other professional courses used to be of five years after 10 plus two, except law, because it was after the graduation degree. But this brilliant idea, I think has changed the course of legal education in the country. The students are more focused as they come after 10 plus two, as compared to the students who come after graduation in law courses. We have also utilized the services of Dr. Menon as director of the National Judicial Academy, now coming to the issue, I'm told this is the seventh moot court competition. Earlier it was limited to the SAR countries. Now it has extended to Asian countries. The details have been furnished to you. I will not go into the same. I was told that the winners in the earlier competitions and this competition also, I don't know, the result is yet to be declared, but a number of them were from Indian colleges. That shows the quality of legal education in our country. This will, you see, give an idea to other countries also, the students from other countries to join the courses of the colleges in our country. My heartiest congratulations to the winners who have been now shortlisted for further rounds. And nevertheless, good luck to the students who could not make it to the selected team as even participation is very important as has been shared by Dr. Basim. It, is, it needs a lot of courage to participate in these kind of events. It's not very easy for everyone to participate. In our times, there used to be hardly any moot court competitions. Maybe in a class, sometimes it is there. But after this system has started, I think the advocacy skills in the students have really sharpened. The best thing about this format is that this is not limited to the moot court only, as three other features, three other parts have also been added, as have been shared. The research papers are really good. We recently celebrated our Constitution Day on 26th November, and Constitution is said to be the mother document. As the mother has the solution for all problems, we go to the Constitution only for finding all solutions and take ideas and guidance from that. In our times, when we joined the profession, it was all books, no IT was there. So all search and taking out all the case laws basically was reading different books, different reporters or articles 
or the theories or by different writers basically. But now with the click of a button, you can search the law. So it has made it very easy. But with this, the experience goes that the knowledge of law probably has reduced because limited knowledge of law is coming. Because you search a particular word and once that word is there in a paragraph, the matter is over. Otherwise, a lot of judgments used to be read at that time. But the fact remains that now with the invent of IT and use of that in the judicial system, I think we should use that for improving our system, the quality, as well as taking care of the quantity. Artificial intelligence is one of the facts which I think is required and which is being taken care of seriously for the judicial system. And I can share that Honorable Mr. Justice Nageshwar Rao is heading that committee in the Supreme Court. And we are coming with a lot of ideas which will help us in this charge of our duties. If we go to the subject a little bit in detail, one of the subject is about social media, regulation and privacy. It's a hot topic now. We all know that social media is a very powerful nowadays. It can break or make anyone in no time. Privacy is also a matter of concern because anybody can upload any information about anyone which may be private to him. And we judges are also not spared. It has now been touched even on the Constitution Day celebrations also. That in at many times there is a lot of material uploaded on the social media about the judges. A private person may be able to answer to any of the, these allegations, but we judges will not be. Now, boot court is there. Yes, it has become part of the integral system, legal, legal education. But the fact remains that still the participation is not of the 100% students who go to the law colleges. This is a subject also with some marks earmarked for it. But all these students are not made to participate in this because there is mushrooming of law colleges in the country as a result of which in some colleges the quality has come down. And as a result, we are not finding good advocates also sometimes in the court because advocacy skills are also required which come with moot court as shared by Dr. Basim that a lot of hard work and labor is required for that purpose. There is a need to have a regular monitoring system by the Bar Council or any other authority that uh, these events are organized. Maybe all these students are not able to participate in the moot court competitions at the national or international level, but they can still participate and they can be made to participate at least at the local level, at the district level or state level, because there are a lot of colleges in every state now. Practical knowledge because is very important. Otherwise, the bookish knowledge will not lead you anywhere. And the advantage of this participation in the moot court competition is that your drafting skills improve. You carry a lot of research on the subject. And the, in the process, you will learn a lot of other things also. Your way of presentation of a case, as has been shared with experience by Dr. Basin, these are very important for an advocate. Your presence of mind, your quick, quick response to the queries, and uh, you see at the uh, moot court competition stage, many of the lawyers will not get experience of appearing before the high court judges or the Supreme Court judges, because many a times they are the judges in this moot court competition. And the queries at that level may be different as compared to the queries at the trial court level or maybe the other moot court competitions. Then they have analytical mind because they need to analyze all the problems. Problems are sometimes, yes, decided cases, but sometimes the live issues are also there. Public speaking is another important thing, and so is the communication skill. These all come with the participation in the moot court competition seriously, not just as a participant, basically. But I can share one experience that in some of the moot court competitions, I had gone to judge the semi-finals or finals also. And I find that a uh, lot of students' performance was far better than even some of the lawyers in the court were appearing. And that's the quality. But the another idea is that uh, <clears throat> many of these students 
they don't join the legal profession they go to the corporate world or in house lawyer or other opportunities they see but if they they can do some so much of hard work i think if they join the legal profession or the judicial service the quality in that side will also improve because we can't keep the law also static their participation in the these two areas is also very important and now with the pandemic you see that is the one part yes we have suffered everybody has suffered but the fact remains that our it system in the court has become very robust it has it was on a very fast track basically use of technology now we could see the lawyers appearing in all courts from throughout the country and even abroad so that is that we have brought the court very close to a litigant basically online filing and then appearance of a lawyer from anywhere so this is one india basically for a, the courts if you see and this is the positive part which we have brought in the judicial system during this pandemic in addition to the legal education on different subjects or participation in the moot court competition i think the students need to be sensitized for the ethics also for the lawyers because many a time we are seeing the incidents we had an unfortunate incident in up where one lawyer had shot one another lawyer in the court complex only so these kind of incidents really are disturbing so i think some ethics are also required to be the the students are required to be sensitized on these ethics also they have to be sensitized for conducting pro bono cases also because what we find is that the initial years of their career they may not have much work but their enthusiasm their energy levels are very good and if they opt for pro bono work during that period i think this will give good support to our legal service system also we are providing legal aid to the needies and there also they can put their hard work and give their participation representing those litigants mediation and adr is the another area where these students need to be encouraged and everyone has to be you see uh, make made aware of our e court project also there a lot of data available on the national judicial data grid but uh, i don't know how much students are making use of it so if they make use of it we can get advantage out of it now as in this conclave also they have the research papers also these students can carry out research about the pendency of cases or the court system how we can ease out the service how we can make it more user friendly because they are seeing the system from the other side whatever comes to our knowledge in the court we try to improve on that correct the errors but still if they carry out the research they are the young mind they have more ideas as compared to us now so if they guide on that also i think this will be very beneficial for the judicial system instead of uh, now because they are more research oriented also and if they come in litigation i think uh, we will leave the pigeon hole theory as we used to study in the legal theory at that time the law will also grow because new ideas they will bring with the research so this is there and uh, with this moot court competition being international i think to, now it is being held virtually but in times to come it will be physical also we hope that this pandemic will be over so this will give an opportunity to all these students who are participating in this to interact with the students from other countries and that participation will also help improve their knowledge know about their neighbors and also share lot of experiences which they have both of them and experience can also be good because every country has its different experience in different circumstances with these words i am thankful to the organizers organizers for giving me an opportunity and also again congratulate all the students who have now been going to the next round best luck to them and also good luck to all the students who participated that even participation is very important and courageous in these events it's not very easy i can recall my time that i appeared in the court for the first time after law and it is very difficult to appear in the court so this can be taken care of if the students are allowed to participate in the moot court competitions with these words i am again thankful to the organization organizers thank you very much thank you sir we are delighted to have you amongst us 
free speech of the citizens of this country cannot be stifled by implicating them in criminal cases unless such speech has the tendency to affect public order honorable mr justice l nageshwar rao judge supreme court of india today i sayed fazal ur rahman niazi have been bestowed the honor to announce that we are joined by honorable mr justice l nageshwar rao judge supreme court of india Justice Rao was born on 8th June 1957 at Chirala Prakasham district Andhra Pradesh Justice Nageshwar Rao enrolled as an advocate at Bar Council of Andhra Pradesh in July 1982 after getting an LLB from AC College of Law Guntur Andhra Pradesh Justice Rao started his practice at the district court Guntur Andhra Pradesh in 1982 and started practicing in the Andhra Pradesh High Court from January 1985 one year later he started practicing at the supreme court of india and continued to do so till 2016 after which he was elevated as the supreme court judge on 13th may 2016 justice rao has also served as the additional solicitor general of india from august 2003 to may 2004 and again from august 2013 to december 2014 on behalf of everyone present here I heartily welcome the chief guest of the event to release the Asian Jewel Conclave India Round brochure and to give the valedictory address. I hope you can see this. Sir, I can't. I can't see this. Thank you, sir. We Thank can you see so that. We can see, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Tharani, the president of the law college. This is Bindal, Chief Justice of uh, the Allahabad High Court. Sir Venkat Ramani, Dr. Lalit Basin, my good friends from the uh, Supreme Court. Mr. Sibu Kumar, Akhilesh Kumar Khan, and uh, the other members of. Uh, the committee which is organizing uh, this event and uh, the management and teaching staff of uh, the college and uh, my dear uh, students i am a resident of noida but i have never had a chance to visit uh, uh, this uh, college i was a resident for 6 years i have been in delhi but i'll get back to noida again after my retirement It would have been a pleasure to visit uh, the college uh, physically and uh, meet the students and interact with them. I will do that uh, definitely uh, sometime. When uh, the anchor was uh, speaking about me, I was patiently hearing him as normally judges do when young lawyers argue in courts. even if uh, young lawyers are not making too much sense we would uh, patiently permit them to speak so that uh, get more confidence in their appearance in court and even if there are any flaws most of us the high courts and the supreme court are patient with young lawyers because they are the persons who will grow to be the leaders of the bar i congratulate uh, lloyds college uh, who i am told which i am told is amongst uh, the top 10 private colleges in law in this country 
for conducting this seventh Professor N. R. Madhuminan Asian Voting Competition India Round. And I convey my best wishes to the college for Professor N. R. Madhuminan Asian Voting Competition Law Students Conference and Colloquium 2021-22, which is scheduled to be conducted between 25th and 27th of February 2022. Madhav Menon was a legend, as was being mentioned by Dr. Basim. He is rightly referred to as uh, the father of the modern legal education. And he was the architect to bring a change in legal education. When uh, I studied law and uh, law students of my generation, We're having uh, the majority of students in the class uh, who could not get admission in uh, postgraduate courses or other uh, professional courses. And uh, this was a course to which uh, students were joining as a last resort. Amongst those uh, students uh, who completed the law course, only a few of them uh, took up the profession. Most of them went into other avocations like business, agriculture, etc. College education in law was uh, not taken very seriously. Attendance was not a problem. So people were uh, doing other things when they were uh, studying law. And as Justice Bindal was uh, telling you, most of us started arguing cases only after we entered the profession. Though there was uh, some semblance of some moot court competitions being held, I saw only one uh, moot court competition held in the classroom. Uh, nothing more than that in the college where I studied. And I think that was the order of the day in the years when we were uh, studying law. The great visionary, Professor Madhav Milan, started this five-year law course and now you would see the best talent coming into legal education after the 12th class. And uh, legal education is uh, a sought after field of study now. And the professional activity also has uh, caught the attention of uh, the students. Apart from being lucrative, the uh, profession throws up challenges to youngsters to support the common man in achieving constitutional goals. I congratulate the winners of the moot court uh, competition, <laughs> the result which would be announced soon. You have worked very hard and this success uh, should give you confidence to do even better. Don't rest on your laurels. There's a long way to go. In spite of your winning this competition, you might have made some mistakes, do some introspection. Correct those also for a better performance in future competitions and way ahead in your life as and when you enter the profession. And the others, you need not even bother that you haven't uh, uh, succeeded in this competition by winning. Again, learn from your mistakes and experiences. Your chance is going to come. And as and when an opportunity comes, uh, seize it. And I'm sure that this experience will stand in good stead in your future participation in other events as well as appearance in courts. Opening up the vista of uh, the smooth court competitions, which are actually camouflaged courtrooms and extending it beyond the borders would definitely provide an opportunity for the law students 
to interact with their contemporaries from the other countries and learn from them apart from whatever they're learning in uh, college. Moot courts prepare the uh, law students for appearance in courts in all ways. As Justice Bindal was pointing out, preparation of a brief needs research, like a lawyer researches for his case. And thereafter, preparation for the case, which is judged by either legal professionals who are lawyers or uh, sitting judges of high courts and uh, the Supreme Court will definitely give you a feeling of appearing in a regular court. I have seen some problems in moot courts which are life problems, except change of names, which definitely give an opportunity to the students to deal with the cases that are given to them which would definitely be a good experience as and when the, the students enter the courtroom, they would have the confidence that they can face the court. There are three duties for a lawyer. One is a duty to the client. The second is duty to the court. And the third is duty to the society you will be able to discharge your duty to the client only if you follow the four C's which Dr. Lalit Basin was telling you to follow. You should have dedication to follow all the four C's. And with dedication and hard work, you should be prepared to serve the client as and when he comes and then be true to the brief. Your duty to the court is a solemn duty that when you appear in court, you should be honest, you should be truthful, and you should have the best way of how you present your case. Your uh, behavior in court with the judges as well as your uh, colleagues, this is the duty that you owe to the court, due to society, which is very important uh, duty is to uphold the uh, rule of law and apply the constitutional uh, principles and be of some service to society. Roscoe Pound said that there are three ideas involved in a profession. One is organization, the second is learning. The third is spirit of public service. All these three attributes are essential. The remaining idea that is gaining a livelihood is incidental. Legal profession is called a noble profession as the profession is the upholder and protector of law. Sir Edward Abbott Parry, a British judge, spoke of seven lamps of advocacy. They are honesty, courage, industry, wit, eloquence, judgment, and the lamp, lamp of fellowship. All these have to be imbibed by all students of law and practiced. When you join law, all these students have decided to be students of law, not for a period of five years, but for your lifetime. Persons who enter the profession are students for their lifetime. You have seen judges and senior advocates saying that they're students of law. Law is such a vast uh, subject that uh, nobody can claim to be experts in law. There is something new that you would have to learn every day. But uh, mind you, you will enjoy doing this all your lifetime. I have, and I'm sure Justice Bindal has, as 
was as is the case of Mr. Venkatramani and uh, Dr. Basim. Initially, when I was in college, I used to hear my father tell me, "Why is it that I'm not concentrating on my education? Why is it that I'm not spending too much time on studying?" I used to feel, uh, "What is this all the time?" I'm told that I should read. After I started my uh, profession, my wife and children used to complain that all the time I'm only in the office reading books. But uh, it's not of a compulsion that uh, you read. It's because of your dedication to the profession that you read. It's because of the challenges that lie ahead that you read. It's because of the urge to succeed you read. And it's because of your commitment to the brief and the client that you prepare. And all this uh, preparation gives you so much of satisfaction when you go and then perform in courts without saying anything against students who would be attracted to join uh, offices of law firms or go abroad for employment. The actual challenge of a lawyer is in a courtroom. And the satisfaction that he gets when he does some service to the client who approaches him is unmatchable. It's not about the money that he makes. Money is only consequential. As I just said, Osco Pond also says it's just incidental. But one thing, you work hard, you rise up the ranks, and then become a good lawyer. Money is something which automatically flows. So you need not think of money, you need not work for money, but you should think of the service that you are doing to your client and the other things which you should do which I am going to tell you now. You should never treat a legal profession to be a money spinner. You should treat this legal profession to be a service to the society. How are you going to serve the society? All of you must have seen the preamble as uh, Mr. Bindal was pointing out. We are fresh from the Constitution Day celebrations which we had the day before and uh, yesterday also. Actually, the Supreme Court was celebrating the Constitution Day celebrations for two days, Friday as well as uh, Saturday. The Constitution was prepared by the Constituent Assembly and it was approved by the Constituent Assembly on 26th of November 1949, celebrate the Republic Day on 26th of January 1950, though we got independence in 1947. The preamble of the uh, Constitution is the epitome of the Constitution philosophy. If you have seen the preamble, pre the people of India are uh, people which cover uh, all sections of the society, all communities, all religions, haves, have-nots, the minorities, we the people includes hard and threatening poor people. All of us have resolved to constitute this country into a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. People who were then there, they have resolved to constitute this and to secure to the citizens justice, social, economic, and political, liberty, equality, and fraternity. Justice, which is mentioned here in the preamble, that to social and economic justice, 
apart from political justice. It doesn't restrict itself only to justice delivered by judges in court. Justice is also done by the legislature as well as the executive. They are talking of social and political justice along with social economic justice. Social economic justice is something which comes from the government by discharging the duty of implementing the directive principles. I wish that all the students have already read the constitution. I would encourage them to keep reading this constitution, which is a secular holy Bible, Gita, Quran. So whichever religion you come from, this is a secular book, which you should be very thorough with to imbibe the principles that are there in the constitution and follow them. Directive principles, though not enforceable, have to be implemented by the executive because of the duty cast on them to ensure that the citizens of this country receives whatever is mentioned there, welfare, etc. When you're talking of Social economic injustice, you are talking of those people who are underprivileged. When you are speaking of social economic injustice, you are talking of those deprived people who need the help points, which is the duty of the executive. Article 38, 39, 43, and the other provisions of the constitution impose an obligation on the government to ensure that the minimum needs of those persons who are destitute are taken care of. Why am I talking about this to you now? I'm talking about this to you because of fraternity which is mentioned in the preamble. All of us know about rights. This is Bindal pointed out the rights of individuals which have been developing. We have rights of privacy, which is an unenumerated right, which is recognized in 21. Right of speech is spoke about social media. These are all the fundamental rights which all of you should recognize, realize, and propagate to the persons because in this country there are so many people who do not even know about their rights. So it is the duty of all law students to inform people who do not know about their rights that these are your rights. That's one of the duties. But apart from that, when we talk about uh, the fraternity, fraternity is universal brotherhood. Fraternity is something which is a community right. Why is fraternity very important? Fraternity is important because we should live as a nation. We should grow as a nation. As it is, we come from different cultures. A person coming from the Northeast would find people coming from South India having completely different cultures. The same would be the case of people coming from the northern part of the country. They find that the culture of Kerala is different, but still we are a nation. That's how we speak of unity and diversity. In spite of having diverse cultures, diverse backgrounds, diverse history, all of us are bound together to take this nation to greater heights. Fraternity can be the only factor which would help this country to grow. If this society is divided on the basis of religion, religion, caste, or creed, the question of development would not be there. It would be stultified. Fraternity is something which all of us have to 
feel, not only think of and practice. I would encourage students to not treat any person to whichever section of the society is coming from, to whichever caste he belongs to as a different person. Clarence Thomas was speaking to Notre Dame University when I had an occasion to see that uh, video. He said, he's a black. He said when he used to walk into the classroom, he used to just see whether there is anybody in the classroom with, which, with whom he can identify. He was the only person who was black in his classroom in law college. He said, it was very difficult for me uh, to feel comfortable in a place where I could not identify myself. To start with, you know that you're going to be discriminated on the basis of race. That should never happen. In this country, unity in diversity and equality should not remain on paper. I would exhort all the law students to put this into practice. You treat everybody as equals. Then only the question of promoting the liberty would arise. And the goal of fraternity, which is there in the preamble, would be achieved. Students in uh, Lloyd's College, I'm sure that they're privileged in getting education in such a good college. They do not have a problem of finding ways and means of earning their daily bread. My dear students, there are at least 25 lakh people in this country who die every year because of not getting food. It's starvation. There are about 9,000 children under the age of 55 years who die every day because of lack of nutrition facilities. We should consider ourselves very lucky. And the first duty of a person, forget about a lawyer, is trying to help the people in need. How are you going to do it? Ease through this mechanism of law. How are you going to do it through this mechanism of law? As and when your help is needed for access to justice for people who cannot afford to enter the portals of court, that's where you come in, in so far as the profession is concerned. Even otherwise, as a fellow human being, whatever help you can extend to persons who are deprived, that would give immense satisfaction to you. Service to the nation is as an individual first and then, the, then as a lawyer. We utilize the legal profession for the purpose of serving this country and the society. That is the best thing that can happen to you. You have a long way to go. I wish you all the best in all your future endeavors. I'm sure all of you would be an asset to the legal profession. As Justice Bindal was saying, I have the same experience of seeing young lawyers uh, coming, whom we call greenhorns, performing much better than some lawyers who have spent long number of years in court. That is a very encouraging sign that we are getting fresh blood into this stream of legal profession. And that would go a long way in the profession being really called noble. Thank you very much and God bless all the students. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. It's a pleasure to have you amongst us. Now, I, Bhavani Singh Rajprohit, take the privilege to once again welcome Professor Dr. Lisa P. Lukos, Professor, University School of Law and Legal Studies, Guru Govind Singh Indraprasth University, Delhi. Tajra Millar, 
and national administrator india and now for the most awaited part of the event i invite professor dr lisa p lukos for the declaration of the winners thank you bhavani it's my proud privilege to announce the result of professor n r madhava menon asian jewel conclave 2021 we have three sets of awards sarojit basu roy award for the best students advocate memorial awards and announcement of qualifying teams on behalf of milat silk and loy law college let me thank all the participants in the mooting competition from all over the country now with the permission of our esteemed chief guest honorable mr justice l nagesh rao judge supreme court of india it's my pleasure to announce the results lord chief mayor the best memorial awards the second uh, let me announce the second best memorial award first then i will move on to the best memorial the second best memorial award is being shared between two teams nrmc 21738 himachal pradesh national law university shimla the team consists of angida sharma ishan singh jain and siddharth jha and it's shared between nrmc 21738 and nrmc 21701 kerala law academy college tiruvannadapuram the team consists of manipriya chalan kirtana sajeev and john paraykar the best memorial award goes to nrmc 21715 rajiv gandhi national university of law patiala team consists of chahad gaudam sachi sati and nandini jain sarojit basu roy award for the best students advocate goes to nrmc 21755 Pranaya Dayalu Shastra Deem to be University Tanjore Now let me announce the qualifying teams NRMC 21703 National University of Advanced Legal Studies Kochi NRMC 21707 army institute of law punjab nrmc 21715 rajiv gandhi national university of law patiala nrmc 21727 amiti law school amiti university haryana nrmc 21738 himachal pradesh national law university shimla NRMC 21744 Faculty of Law Jamia Millia Islamia New Delhi NRMC 21755 Shastra Devi Tv University Tanjore Tamil Nadu These are the seven teams who are qualified now to compete in the Asian Cup And let me also announce a reserve team If any one of the qualifying team fails to register for the Asian Cup within the stipulated time then the reserve team will be allowed to register the reserve team is nrmc 21757 symposis law school pune congratulations to all the winners and qualifying teams thank you very much thank you so much ma'am we are pleased to have you now i would like to call upon professor dr mohammad salim director lloyd law college general coordinator steering committee professor n r madhava menon asian jewel conclave good evening and good evening 
it is an honor to welcome respected chief guest of the valedictory function honorable mr justice l nageshwar rao judge supreme court of india i feel privileged to welcome our guest of honor for today's valedictory function honorable mr justice rajesh bindal chief justice high court of judicature at allahabad let me take this opportunity to welcome dr lalit bhasin president silf and bar association of india mr manohar thairani president lloyd law college mr a venkat ramani senior advocate supreme court of india chair per co chair person professor nr madhav menon asian jural conclave professor dr s siva kumar senior professor indian law institute new delhi former member law commission of india honorary asian jural conclave administrator professor dr lisa p lucos professor ip university treasurer milad national administrator india dr akhilesh kumar khan deputy director lloyd law college secretary general professor nr madhav menon asian jural conclave dr madhukar sharma deputy director lloyd law college eminent dignitaries judges of the competition faculty members participants from across the country and dear students at the closing of this 3 days program named professor nr madhav menon asian jural conclave 2021-22 seventh professor nr madhav menon asian mooting competition india round i have been given the opportunity and responsibility to give the vote of thanks and it is indeed a matter of great pride and pleasure for me this is the event named after the great visionary known as the father of modern legal education it was professor padma padma bhushan professor dr anar madhav menon sir professor menon's devotion and commitment towards improving legal education in the country that brought him to the to meet the youngest and younger generation of lawyers in the initial editions of this event his presence was a blessing to the participants and guests we all know that today too we have his blessings the organizing committee has worked with the sole aim at taking forward his dreams of nurturing professional skills of the students and molding them into socially committed lawyers today as the chief guest of this competition we are extremely delighted and obliged and honored by the gracious presence of honorable mr justice l nageshwar rao judge supreme court of india i extend my deepest gratitude to your lordship for taking time out from your busy schedule your lordship's very presence in this event is extremely motivating to the participants the students the organizing committee honorable lordship i on behalf of the lloyd law college extend my heartiest vote of thanks for gracing this function and sharing with this young audience your vision your perspectives and your experiences with the youngest audience of our country who are entering the legal education thank you lordship i would like to offer my sincere gratitude to honorable mr justice rajesh bindal chief justice high court of judicature at allahabad your lordship i extend my sincere gratitude for your gracious presence and for your words of wisdom to this young generation of lawyers lordship thank you so much i am indebted to your gracious presence i extend my sincere gratitude to dr lalit bhasin president silf and bar association of india sir your experience your wisdom your commitment in the field of law to legal education profession and fraternity is itself an inspiration to each one of us and every one of us connected to the legal fraternity i extend my deepest gratitude for your kind presence thank you so much sir i extend my deepest gratitude to mr manohar thairani president lloyd law college chairperson founding committee professor nr madhav menon asian jural conclave for his untiring support and his continuous motivation to all of us it is with your support and your guidance sir that we are able to fathom newer challenges in the field of law 
legal education, law school teaching and learning. Thank you, sir. I would like to offer my sincere gratitude to Mr. R. Venkat Ramni, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India, Co-Chairperson, Professor N. R. Madhva Menon, Asian Jural Conclave. Sir, it is with your untiring zeal and your continuous commitment towards the students, quality legal education, quality profession, quality judging, and quality of improving everyone who is connected to the law, to the society, to the betterment of the humanity. We are extremely delighted to have your words, your wisdom, your guidance, and always giving us mark and guiding us. Thank you so much, sir. I extend my deepest gratitude to our guide, Professor Dr. S. Siva Kumar, sir, Senior Professor, Indian Law Institute, New Delhi, former member, Law Commission of India, honorary Asian Jural Conclave Administrator. It is with sir's energy, enthusiasm, that we are able to take forth Professor Menon's vision in the area of moting academics and research and all areas that has been taken care and progressed by Professor N. R. Madhva Menon, sir, not only in India, not only in, the, in this part of the country, but over the Asia, over the world. Thank you so much, sir. I also extend my heartfelt gratitude to Professor Dr. Lisa P. Lukos, Professor, University School of Law and Legal Studies, Guru Govind Singh, Indra Prastha University, Treasurer Milad, National Administrator India, Ma'am's continuous guidance and untiring efforts and support and commitment to the academics and to this competition and to the legal education and research and to the student progression and support has always been inspiring to me, to my students and all of us. I would now thank my team of faculty members who have been instrumental in making this event possible along with Dr. Anand Maria, who has been the drafting member of the drafting committee of, the mooting comp of this moot court problem. I'm thankful to Dr. Anand Maria, Dr. Tasneem Khan, who has been continuously guiding and the students and making this event possible. Professor Avantika Dureha, head of the anchoring committee. Dr. Preeti Tiwari, head of the anchoring committee. Dr. Sonali Mishra, head of the anchoring committee. I'm extremely thankful to the presence of all my faculty members. Professor Navneet, who is the who is assistant professor of law with us and chief coordinator of this competition. Professor Madh, Rupesh Madhav, Professor Abhinav Mishra, Mr. Akhil Sankhyan, Professor Pankaj Singh, Mr. Sayyid Subur Hussain, Mr. Robin Jacob, sir, who has been taking care of all through this, this event with respect to the judges. I'm thankful to Dr. Vikram Singh, Dr. Professor Dr. Malik Arjun, sir, Professor Anil Thakur, Ms. Manju Khilari, Dr. Om Krishna, Professor Amit Shivastav, Mr. Ratish Malik. I am delighted to take the name of my student team who has been instrumental in making this event possible and making this event a great success. Mr. Shubham Anand, Mr. Ashish Kumar Rai, Mr. John Santosh. Thank you so much, team for making this event a grand success and great learning exercise for all the students in India and all of us. I am thankful to Mr. Om Singhania, Achal Kumari, Akhil Krishnan, Naman Chaube, Anj Gupta, Mikesh Kumar Singh, Atul Kumar, Muskan Agrawal. Thank you so much students for making this all happen. In the end, I must have to take the name of one person who is making all the effort every time. 24 hours to make this event grand success in last seven editions. Advocate Ms. Anju Jain. She has been a backbone of our administration, of our work, of our making things happen. And someone who has always been making this happen, Professor Dr. Lisa P. Lokos, ma'am. I'm extremely thankful to you, both, both of you, for making this event uh, a flagship event an event which is for which Lloyd, Lloyd Law College is known in, the, in India, in the legal fraternity, in the judicial circle, in law schools in India and in the world. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind words. With the permission of our chief guest, Honorable Mr. Justice L. Nageshwar Rao, sir, 
with the permission of our guest of honor honorable mr justice rajesh bindal sir we will end the session sir thank, thank you, you very much doctor thank you very honored doctor thank, thank you for your presence thank, thank you very much thank you thank you thank you doctor first our honorable chief guest and guest of honor will leave the session and only then we will leave the session thank you everyone for joining us thank you so much